Good morning, church. It's good to be here. Glad you're here this morning. If you want to take your Bibles to the book of 1 John, we read the first 10 verses in the Bible reading. So I'll be starting from this morning. It's good to get the opportunity to preach and to share what God's hopefully given me to give to you, um, to give to you today. It'll be a little bit different, and I hope you'll bear with me on that. I believe this is what has become relevant for me, and if it's relevant for me, then it could be relevant for you as well. So why don't I pray? I'm going to ask God to help me, and then I'm going to ask God to open your ears and your hearts to receive the Word of God this morning. Lord, we are very thankful for the opportunity to be in church. I know there are places around the world especially with, uh, with COVID at the moment where people can't meet, people are, are stuck at home and they can't fellowship, they can't uh, do what they normally do. But Lord, at the moment here in Brisbane, we can, even though there's some restrictions with masks, we do really appreciate that we can meet. And I thank you for that. I do pray this morning you'd help me as I deliver your word. Um, in a very simplistic way, I pray that you would use it to, to speak to hearts, to encourage and to, um, to obviously glorify your name. I pray that you would open the, the hearts of, of, and, and ears of people today that they would listen and they'll be able to get whatever you want for them. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. First John chapter one is a very encouraging uh, passage. It, it, it talks a lot um, about fellowship with God. One of the greatest things about being a Christian is that we do get to have that fellowship with God. Um, we get to have fellowship, if we have a look in verse 3, <clears throat> it says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, firstly. Isn't it good that we get to have fellowship with other people? Um, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, maybe we wouldn't have that close fellowship one with another. I know there are a lot of Differences in backgrounds, differences in, in uh, likes, differences in thoughts. And if it wasn't for Christ, maybe, maybe you wouldn't have fellowship with me. And maybe for some of you, I wouldn't have fellowship with you. But because of Christ, that brings us together. We truly can have fellowship one with another. But the thing that I really enjoy, it says, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. That's a great blessing. Now, as you know, man's history has not always been like this. When God created man, man did enjoy the freedom to commune with God and have perfect, perfect fellowship with him. Back in the garden, God only gave one condition for Adam and Eve whilst they were in that perfect place of bliss, of, of peace and fellowship, and God expressly told Adam and Eve that they were not to eat of the fruit um, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And if they did, they would surely die. Now, it's interesting to think that maybe Adam didn't maybe, maybe quite understand death uh, because he'd never experienced death. It was something that would become very new to him. But not only physical death, but as we understand uh, spiritual death or, or a separation from God meaning no fellowship with him. Before sin, Adam walked with God, communed with God, had open fellowship with God, but when sin entered into the world, they were cast out of the, out of the Garden of Eden and that close fellowship with God just, just wasn't there anymore. Now, if that was our story, then obviously the world and, and man is, has, has been painted a very sad and terrible picture. But God is an eternal love for his creation had always planned a way for man to be reconciled back to God and have that fellowship restored uh, that had been cut off by sin. I want to share with you Romans chapter 5 verse, verse 19. I want to read that for you. Romans 5 and verse 19. The Bible says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. By one man, Adam, many were made sinners. By one man, that's Christ, many were made righteous. 
And the Bible tells us in John 3.16 that for God so loved the world, that that's God's expression of love, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When Christ shed his blood on the cross for our sins and we accept the gift of salvation, several things do become true. And, and, and there are a lot, but these are the, the things that jump out at me. Firstly, I become a child of God. I, I, I become part of the family of God and that's how we have fellowship one with another. We have a home in heaven. We have our sins forgiven. But for us here now on this earth, we have that fellowship restored with God. We have open communication again with God. Now our text in 1 John shares one of the greatest truths of the Christian life and it's written there because verse 4, it gives us a reason why it's there. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. I want you to understand and be encouraged this morning that having fellowship with God is there and you need to understand it because you can be joyous as a Christian. You can actually have joy in your heart because of the fellowship with God. Now this morning, I'm hoping to share with you some personal thoughts. I mean personal thoughts about fellowship with God and pray that it might help you. And I hope you will enter into the, and, and give me a little bit of liberty as, as I look into this, as, as I share some things with you about what's happened with me. On May 29 this year, I suffered a heart attack that impacted my life greatly and has given me some food for thought with regards to not only my physical life but also my spiritual life. Over this last month, I've come to notice some similarities between my physical heart condition but also my spiritual heart condition and this is going to be the basis of, of my message today. I think for me to launch into what I want to say, I, I thought I'd explain a little bit just for understanding of what happened. On Saturday morning, on, on May 29, we had planned to meet here at church for a pulpit committee meeting. Pastor Hernan was in town and we were going to chat with him and we arrived at 9, I arrived just before 9.30, I think Brother Dave Holowati was here with me. We sat down in these pews here and right on 9.30, right on schedule, Brother Andrew, Pastor Hernan, and I think uh, may have been a Brother Michael or Brother Phil turned up. And right at that point when they come through that back door, I started to feel intense pain in my chest. Now it was really just like bad heartburn. And uh, I got up, I walked around, uh, thought okay, I've had heartburn before and I thought okay, well, this is all this is. And I went outside and I rang my wife said, dear, what do you reckon I should do? And I said, look, I'm getting pain in my arm. The same burning pain from my chest was now my left arm, quite, quite badly. And uh, she said, well, you can go to the doctor maybe. So I thought about it. I thought, yeah, okay, I've got that option. I'll, 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 I'll go to the meeting and um, I'll go to the doctor after the meeting. So I walked in and they'd, they'd already gone into the office and I sat down. I can't remember who I was sitting next to, but... Andrew was across from me and, and, and the men were around and this pain was continually going on and on and on. And uh, I sat there and, and thought, okay, what am I going to do with this pain? It's, it's obviously heartburn, it's, it's, not, it's not moving, it could be something more. So I texted Andrew, Andrew, having pain in the chest and pain in the arm, if you, if you remember that. And uh, I just wanted to let someone know, in case it progressed any further, they, they kind of knew what was happening. From there, um, conversation was going on and I tried to listen. Uh, really, I mean, in the end, I wasn't listening because I was just so concerned about what was going on. Until eventually, it might have been maybe 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes later, I had made a decision, I've got to do something because I can't sit here with this pain any longer. So I stood up and um, I shared what was going on and uh, my brother Dave I got up and took me to the doctor and uh, history is they called an ambulance and went to hospital and, and, and that's how that, that eventuated. 
and I actually was having a heart attack while I was in the office. Now I share that with you just I guess to give you a little bit of understanding of, of what went on with me and there are some similarities or that there are some lessons we can learn about our spiritual life, about our spiritual fellowship with God. And I want to share these things with you today. I'll try not to be too long. First of all, with that in mind, my heart attack caused me a lot of pain and discomfort. Raise your hand if you've ever had a heart attack. Anyone else had a heart attack here in church? For me, it caused me intense pain. As I said, it was like a burning sensation of heartburn. Interesting enough, one month before that, I was in the car with Laurel and I had said to her, you know, one of the things that I'm fearful of is not cancer, but having a heart attack. I had said to her, I believe it won't be, I believe it will just be a matter of when it will happen. That was one month before. Whether or not God gave me some, some thoughts about that, I have no idea. But that was, on, that, that was on my mind. But my heart attack caused me a, a lot of pain. You know, heart attacks do come from uh, a, usually a consequence of long-term actions. Long-term, long-term actions. And when you think of a, of a physical body, and God's given us a heart to work and to pump blood through our body and, and to keep our body alive, and it does its job. But with long-term consequences, if you allow things to, uh, to work in your body or if you allow things to influence your body, then obviously the end result is what happened to me. There was some family history on my, on my mum's side. Uh, my grandfather died of a heart attack in, at, at age 44. My grandmother in her 50s started to have heart, heart issues and she died um, a, few, a few years later. But I think for me, the long-term, the long-term issues were doing a lot, trying to fit a lot in when it comes to, to work, when it comes to, to church, when it comes to family, and all the associated stresses that go with that. But then there's also the things of that, that we put into our bodies. Thankfully for me, I'm not a smoker, and thankfully for me, I'm, I'm not a drinker. I've never smoked. I've never drank, and not that I stand here in, in pride of that, but if I was a smoker and drinker, I possibly may have had a heart attack a lot earlier. But long-term actions bring consequences, and, and possibly, obviously, for those, if you, if you eliminate the smoking and the drinking, that obviously only is what I'm eating. So obviously there were some consequences of long-term eating wrong things, possibly due to being busy, um, being out on the road a lot. But those things can cause, uh, did cause me a lot of pain and discomfort. I want you to understand when we think about our spiritual life, long-term, uh, long-term actions will give you some consequences in your spiritual life. I want you to think about the person who, through life, ends up having no time for God. No time for God. If you're the sort of person who, who gets so busy that, uh, that when it comes to, I guess, the activities of church, that stops you going to church. If you do that regularly enough, there are some long-term actions that will, that will give you some consequences. What about if you're the sort of person who has no time with God? And that's having a personal relationship with God. I said in the beginning I'm going to share some personal things. Obviously, I'm talking about my physical, my physical body. But this has caused me to think about my spiritual life, my spiritual heart. As I started to contemplate these things, I come to the realisation that my spiritual life has been affected just as much as my physical life over long term. I prayed about how personal I would get, I guess due to fear of what people might think. But there have been times in, in my Christian life over the last few years where long-term no time for God has crept in. 
or no time with God has crept in. I can't stand here and say that my life is a spiritual example. And I need to consider my spiritual heart and the flow that goes on between me and God. I want you to have a look in Psalm 38. Psalm 38. As I was reading through this, I thought about this as a great description of somebody who has uh, some pain and discomfort in their spiritual life, some pain and comfort. We're going to read the first eight verses. It says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. For thine arrow stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger. Neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. The psalmist is now describing what's going on inside of him. Um, For mine iniquities are gone over my head, uh, over mine head, as a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I, I go mourning all the day long, for my loins are filled with a loathsome disease and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. For those of you who, who, if you took the time to consider your relationship with God, your flow of fellowship between God, if you were to honestly consider where it's at this morning, Do you see any of these things? Do you see times of no peace with God? Times where God has seemed to have gone quiet. Not that he ever leaves, not that he ever changes his mind, but because of either our sin or our lack of of wantingness to grow, sometimes leaves us with no peace. There have been times where it seems like there's, there's just no peace in my spiritual life. Frustration. Anger, dissatisfaction, discontentment. There have been times when this has been real for me. And as I share this, I I encourage you to consider, is this real for you? Have there been times where your lack of fellowship with God has caused you pain and discomfort? For me, it has. For those who don't walk with Christ or walk in fellowship, these are the end results for our heart. That's the first thing. My heart caused caused me pain and discomfort. The second thing is my heart attack had had several warning signs, which I didn't realise were warning signs until after the fact. Did you know that six months ago, in just after Christmas, we got to spend three days on the Gold Coast in a house that we'd rented, a great time with family. And then as we were driving back, Laurel and I were driving back and we got to around about the Logan area on the motorway. And guess what happened? I started getting burning in the chest, started getting pain in the chest that was nowhere near as extreme as it was here, but it was just like a bad case of indigestion. And, and, and Laurel, doing what she can, she hands me a, like an antacid tablet to help and the pain did not subside. Went for like 20 minutes, here am I driving down the road? And to me, I look back and and that was obviously a warning sign of something to come. Just before the event, um, there was a feeling of unwellness. We had a men's fellowship here at church where there was barbecue, there was some games, there was a bonfire. I remember very vividly, this is the night before, before the Saturday, I remember just shooting some hoops for about five minutes. I shot maybe, I just shot about six to 10 hoops and I was completely done. I I sat down, apparently someone said I looked very pale um, and I went home very quickly that night. There was something not right. During the two days before the heart attack, there was discomfort in, in my throat, a burning in my throat for two days continually, no matter what I took would not relieve that burning sensation. If I had understood what those things were, maybe I, maybe, uh, maybe I could have made things easier on myself. 
Maybe I could have realized when the heart attack was happening. Maybe I may have done things differently. But there were definitely warning signs that something was about to happen. Did you know that there are warning signs for our spiritual lack of fellowship with God? I want you to think, and, and I see so many people who end up with these things, and, and the hard thing is you don't normally realise that they're happening. There are people who lose interest just in everyday Christianity. Have you ever, ha ever had times where you've just lost interest in, in reading your Bible? It becomes a chore. You know you should, but and you open it up and, and you read and you kind of get nothing out of it and you put it aside and you go about your day. They're warning signs that something is taking place on the inside. I've seen and I've noticed where people's attitude can change towards God's people. Attitude towards other believers can change. Your very family who care about you, our attitude can become so that we, we, we find fault. We see the inconsistencies in their life. We make judgments about them and, what, and, and the reality is there's something happening on the inside of our life. I don't know how many times I've, I've done those things myself or I've made a judgment and, and I've acted in a certain way or, or I've spoken a certain way, later on to review it and realise as soon as I changed my attitude, all those what I thought were problems, they weren't even there. It was all because of me. That there were, these are warning signs, people. If this is you, take heed because there may be a spiritual heart attack waiting around the corner for you. What about those who are, who are uncomfortable around those doing right? Have you ever seen Christians who are walking very well with God and who are making steps of growth and doing something and we sit back and we go, they're just trying to be proud. Look at those people. Who do they think they are? They think, they, they think they're something special, don't they? And sometimes we actually do do this. But it's just a warning sign that there's something wrong on the inside. Thought number three. My, my heart attack was caused by a build-up of cholesterol causing blockages. I'm going to ask the, if the sound desk can put up a couple of pictures. I'm going way out in the limb here. Can anyone see that? Bunch of squiggly lines. That's a cute little heart in there. I believe that is my heart there. A little round ball. It's not moving at the moment. But obviously these are all the different arteries. And I just wanted to show a visual. This is, I believe, before I had some stents put in. I believe this artery here is the main culprit. If you can see just here, there's a blockage there. And then there's a block, and you'll see, the, you'll see the results of the blockage in the next slide in just a second. But I, I had two blockages. I believe one was there, and I think it could have been here, but I'll show you the result of what was happening. When the two stents were placed in, the, in that artery, whoops, sorry. Have a look at this artery now. Have a look how far it clear the blood is flowing now. Where before, Sorry, it stopped kind of here. It kind of it, it's supposed to continue on, but it just seemed to ease off around here. But then the next one, it, it, it continued greatly, and this is them together. You can kind of see it stopping here, and over here it flowed a lot better. So this is what our fellowship with God should look like, but with build-ups we get these blockages, and this is what causes the pain. Thanks, guys. I just wanted to show that just as a visual that, that this is what can happen. Now, the problem is cholesterol is not actually a bad thing. We think it is. But cholesterol is needed for the body to work properly. It is used to build cell walls and it's used to produce some hormones. But there is both good and bad cholesterol and obviously I had too much of the bad. Now we need to be careful that in our spiritual lives we don't allow a build up 
of even what we would say good things so much that it blocks the fellowship that we have with God. What, the way I determine this is there are often things in our lives that I would class as, as me things. Me things that I want to do. So, for example, work. Most of us enjoy the opportunity that, that we either have a job or that we have our own business, that we can grow, we can look after our families, that's all good. But sometimes these good things can become me things. I want my business to grow because I want to be rich. I want my business to grow because it looks after me. And what happens is we, if we allow too much of these me things to become the dominant things in our life, we end up with some blockages in our fellowship with God. There are people who have been in this church and who are not in church because there are things that are more important to them than coming to church. Me things. It can be business, it can be friendships, it can be sport, it can be whatever it is that you desire and it can be a good thing. There's nothing wrong with friendships, there's nothing wrong with business or work, and there's nothing wrong with sport. But when those things take you away from God, which make it so hard for you to have time with God, that's a me thing. The more you include that in your life, the more you allow that in your life, blockages come. Blockages come. Blockages form under the surface I didn't know that that was going on. I didn't know that there were blockages forming. You know what the scary thing is? The guy that did the angiogram said to me while I was on the table and they were doing the dye, they found the blockage straight away. They could see it was clear as day. But he said, in all the other arteries, there's cholesterol forming. And that was very kind of scary because it, if I continue on the, I'll probably get ahead of myself, but if I continue on the same path, living the same way, all the other veins will continue to build up till eventually I'll need a bypass, which obviously I don't want. So things can happen under the surface without us even realising. If we don't see the effects of blockages, then obviously it's going to be too late and you'll have to go through the process that I have done. Not just physically, but, but spiritually. Realising that you're not where you should be is very humbling. Not realising that... I'll tell you the truth. I, I knew those things were going on. I just didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know how to make the changes. Now, this is one that... This is a thought that I only thought about during the last, this last month. When I was having pain and discomfort, some might say, why did I go into the meeting and why didn't I do something sooner? I'm going to tell you the truth, and, and for me, this is very humbling. When I went into that meeting, I was having pain and discomfort and I sat in the room. Some might say, oh, you're just trying to be an Aussie male where I should be right, mate. That was the furthest from my mind. But what was on my mind was, if I say something and it turns out to be nothing, I'm going to look stupid with a bit of heartburn. I'd leave a meeting. Now, for some of you, that might not make sense, but that's really what I felt. And you know, the main person I was afraid of, and I asked this person if it was right to say this, and that's Dave Holowaddy. <laughs> Dave Holowaddy is the man's man. He would, go, he would go hunting in the snow in a pair of shorts and singlets and no shoes for, for 14 days straight to get that deer and not think twice of it. But I was fearful about if I say something, what are others going to think if it ends up being nothing? That was the main reason why I left it so long. At first, I really didn't believe that it was a heart attack. I didn't understand, I, I, I thought to myself, it can't be. This can't be what a heart attack feels like. I thought about reading the stories that 
uh, the tight pain and the, and, uh, and the, like the weight of someone, like an elephant sitting on your chest type pain, and it didn't feel like that, so I thought, it can't be a heart attack. Did you know until we come to the conclusion that there's something wrong in our spiritual life, things will never change. Verse 8 in 1 John 1 says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. We need to come to the conclusion that maybe there could be some things that are just not right. But did you know my fear of, of, of what Dave might say or what the other men might say? When I did say something, Dave was one of the first people to stand up and say, Paul, uh, let me help you. The one that I was kind of fearful of, of what he might say, became, I guess, the ally that helped me get to a place where I could find help. And that was something that was special. I was, I was not expecting that. I was a, uh, like Dave and I, we aren't the closest. We, we don't fellowship at his house. We don't, we don't hang out. But Dave's family. And I found out what true family is like. I was worried about what others would say. I wonder, as you consider your life, and you realise things may not be exactly how they should be. And this is what I've always felt. If I say anything to anyone, what are they going to say? How will they treat me? Will they think of me badly? Will they actually accept me if they find out I'm not this spiritual giant? Whatever. But you know what I've, I've, I've learned? That family are family. Family accept warts, family accept all the bad things, family understand. And I guarantee you this morning, if you would be the person who would be truthful to self and say, God, yes, I know that my spiritual life, there's been some dissatisfaction, there's been some, discon some discontentment, there's, some, there's been some disconnect with the church or with my brothers and sisters, and I, not I will, I will be honest with you, I've never tried just to play church. I've never been a person that just wants to play church. I actually want to do the right thing. I want to be what God wants me to be. I've just always struggled making it happen. I've never been one that just wants to act. And I don't want you to be the person who acts as a Christian. I want you to be a Christian and own it if you're struggling. We, we do need to realise we cannot do this alone. I'm coming to the end very shortly. So one of the other things I realised that after my heart attack was that others were affected by my heart attack. Others were affected by my heart attack. I remember when I, did, um, when I left here, I went to the doctor and they called the ambulance and Laurel was... I'd actually called Laurel and she... She was there within minutes and the ambulance came. And I remember being up in the hospital with, um, with Laurel thinking, at first, still not knowing that it was a heart attack. Because what they'd done is, while, while, while we're waiting for the ambulance, they had given me some medication, very good medication, just a simple spray under the tongue and some aspirin. And what that does is that opens up all the vessels in the body and blood starts to flow and all the pain subsided and was gone. I never really had the pain back again like it ever was. So when the ambulance came, I was now not showing any signs of, 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 ha of having a heart attack. The ECG machine was put on. There were some abnormalities, but it wasn't showing that I was having a heart attack anymore. So when we got to the hospital and they did their test, the doctor came back. One of the tests that they look at is a blood test with arrays of, of troponin levels in the, in the blood. And he said, you've got raised troponin levels. It's not great, but in the realm of a heart attack. And then they do another test three hours later. And if it is a heart attack, there'll be even further raised than it was. And the moment that this man had said, you've had a heart attack, man, that was a real thump. And Laurel was there, and I know Laurel shed a bit of a tear. It was very emotional for her. That even though it didn't end up being a major heart attack, just that thought that, what if I was to die? What if I didn't get treatment? It really had an effect on my family. And from what I understand, 
I had lots of communication with brothers and sisters and it seemed to have affected my brothers and sisters' family here in church as well, which was a real comfort and blessing to me. We don't realise the impact of our lack of fellowship with God, what it can do to other people. As we tried to hide behind our ability to routinely come to church, as we hide behind that, as we don't make the choices to do anything about it, ultimately the church family or our close or our immediate family end up being the ones that suffer, not only just us but others as well. So ultimately, some changes need to be made. A change for me in, 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 in a lifestyle was in order. So I've been able to cut down my McDonald's from 12 meals a week down to six. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Nah, I'm only joking. I said that for Mrs. Blake's. <laughs> we've, we've really worked hard at, at um, working out what I should eat, what I shouldn't eat, um, and lo and behold, it, we, without any special diets, just eliminating things that are harmful for me, I've started to lose weight, which has been good. I've lost nearly, nearly five kilos in the last month just by changing what I eat. There will be some other lifestyle changes as far as fitness. Um, one of the things I really struggled with was doing things. Now, whether or not that was just unfit or lack of flow of blood, really struggled doing activities where I get puffed, lightheaded, and wanting to, wanting to pass out. But hopefully, some of those lifestyle things can change for me physically. But you know, spiritually, there might be some disciplines that need to be adhered to. Some, some, some characteristic things for me, and maybe for you, there might be some things that need to change in your life to get you to a point where you start eliminating some of those me things or things that might be causing the blockages. If you don't, or if I don't, I've already kind of, the, the doctor had said, and the other arteries, there are build up starting. So if I make no changes, it really will just be a matter of time before something happens again or worse. And for you today, if there are some spiritual issues, if there is a lack of flow of fellowship between you and God, and if you realise it and make no changes, it's really a matter of time before something happens to you where you don't want it to be. It, if something happens to like a heart attack spiritually, it may, it may be uh, just like a heart attack is. It's very confronting and damaging to the heart. Spiritually, it can be something that you wish never happened. It may do something to your testimony or to your church that is uh, not irreplaceable, irrevocable, I think, where you can't change it. Um, you can't change it. You wish you could, but you can't. So the last thing that I want to share as we finish up, and I thank you for allowing me to do this, is for me, there are some consequences are seen. So for me, guess what? I'm on ongoing medications now where before I didn't have to, now I have to remember to take certain medications to help me. Over this last month especially, there's been a real lack of energy, a real lack of energy. I'll get to lunchtime some days and I've just got to stop. I've got to lay down, I've got to do something. And that obviously then affects my work. And obviously then, for us, who might be dealing with spiritual things and maybe some consequences is maybe there might be, it may have to be the inability to be able to do some me things that we always wanted to do but may have been a part of the cause of the problem in the first place. So how is the fellowship going with you? This is where I'm going to finish. How is your fellowship going with God? Is it all that it should be? I know for me it hasn't been. You may not be able to see some of the warning signs of loss of flow, but you know others might be able to. When it comes to spiritual things, we might think that everything is fine 
and we might be able to deceive ourselves like we've seen 1 John 1 8. But others sometimes can see it. And sometimes they don't either don't know what to say to try and help you, and sometimes they do. But one thing I do know is that if we decide to make the changes, we have a great God who can help us. Verse 9 of 1 John chapter 1 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. One of the greatest verses, if, if we confess it to God, our lack of spiritual walking, God's not going to go, yeah, I always knew you were like that. He doesn't do that. He says, I'm faithful and I'm just to forgive you and to cleanse you. I'll make it right. I'll restore that fellowship. The flow, like in the slides, will come again. And it'll be like a breath of fresh air in your spiritual life. God would dearly love you to stop, consider, and make the necessary changes before you have an episode like I did physically. So I want to ask you the question today, has God spoken to you in, in, in any way at all about your spiritual life? Has, has God challenged you? Has God opened your eyes to some things? If not, hey, great. Praise the Lord for that. I'm glad things are going well. But if there's a lack of discontentment or a disconnect with things, then what I encourage you to do today is don't be fearful. Don't be fearful what people might think. Because you'll be surprised people might think, well, praise the Lord, good on you. I doubt whether anyone would ever say, I knew it. I knew they had problems. <laughs> I'm glad they went to the front. Nothing like that at all. I guarantee you people will say, praise the Lord, God will work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close in prayer and, and, and I'll invite Caleb to come and close in a song of invitation. If you want to do business with, with God today, please do so. Please don't ignore the warning signs. Please make things right today and get that fellowship restored. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for who you are. I pray that what was shared this morning was, was adequate, was enough for people to, to hear from you and to be willing to make those changes. I just pray you'd help me as, as I do need that help, Lord. Thank you for revealing things about myself that I needed to know and understand and help me as I try to make the life changes and the things that that, that, that needed to be changed in me, I pray you'd help me to do that. Please help our brethren, our church, to grow and to be what you want us to be. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.